Hello everybody, how is it going? My name is Lucas and today we are checking out a very cool amp in the Axe FX3. It's going to be the Mesa Tri-Axis. And guys, if it's your first time here or if you've been here before, make sure you are subscribed because I do lots of cool things here. I do Axe FX reviews, gear reviews, mixing tutorials. I don't want you to miss any of that cool stuff. So make sure you are subscribed. So without any further ado, let's jump right in and check out the Mesa Tri-Axis. So this is from Yex amp guide uh, you can find this on the fractal forum so i kind of want to show you this real quick just so we don't get i'm not going to go into this too deep because i don't want to spend the whole video on this but this is what the triaxis looks like basically it is mesa's preamp now this was made a very long time ago i don't they don't actually make it anymore but they probably should bring it back because it, it's a really cool piece of gear so there's a, a a few different there's a few different uh board versions in here we're going to see that when we go through it and coincidentally enough, Cliff had one of these in gigs. One of Cliff, who is a, the owner CEO of Fractal Audio, had one of these. He gigged it for a while. This is probably what the Axe FX was kind of built on, because he had one of these for a very long time. And I would rec I would reckon this is probably one of the most accurate models in the Axe FX. Now I've never played a real one before, so comment down below if you have and you've compared it to the Axe FX one. Just exactly how close. It is uh, basically what you're gonna have in here. The Triax has had all these different models right here. You had uh, clean, yellow, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, and some more red. Uh, so as Cliff says in here, the the one on the Axe FX, some, some things are gonna be a little bit different than it is in the preamp, just uh, knob taper wise, but it's pretty much the same. And um, these are the different models that we're gonna be looking at. We have a, a few different right here. We have the uh, clean, clean, uh, red, green, yellow, and then we have a, uh, another red. Important thing I want to, to hit on while we're here, Cliff says, uh, he did not use the Boogie Power Amp model for these, as I always prefer using my tri -axis. I have two of them with more of a typical power tube. My favorite power amp with the tri -axis was a VHT2502, so the power amp model is very similar to that. And I did find that actually uh, to be true because going through and dialing in these amps, it's very different from your typical Mesa amp. You, you have to kind of take your idea of a Mesa, of a typical Mesa amp and you have to like turn it a little bit. Like you have to like clock it a little bit. And then once you do that, it, things make a lot more sense. Uh, let me play some, um, I'll play the clean mode for you. Now this is the, based off of the Mark 1, uh, the Fender Princeton. This is what uh, Mesa started on. It's the Princeton with the black face plate. All right, play a little bit for you. Using my mayonnaise duvel, I have bare knuckle war pigs as pickups. And I'm gonna be uh, in the split coil slash single coil mode for this. The clean in here is actually very good coming from a preamp. It kind of surprised me how good it is. I did not touch the EQ. In here, cab wise, I'm using ML Mega Green, which is some of the best greenbacks ever made into a Mesa cab. I kind of like that for clean and kind of crunch stuff. So I'm going to be bouncing between that and GGD Cali, which is some of the best V30s ever put in Mesa cabs. So moving right along. And guys, if you don't have any of these IRs, don't worry. Just grab your favorite IR ever for anything you, you, you make. It does not matter. Grab your favorite IR and then go to town on the amp, okay? As long as you know the IR and you like it, that is what is important. Moving right along. So uh, we're going to be, I'm going to switch from green to uh, back to Cali on this. Uh, so the, the LD1 Red, this is based off of the TX4 board. Uh, in the triacus itself. Basically what this one is, is it's kind of like a British crunch lead. So it's kind of like a Marshall sound. I say kind of. It's this weird kind of thing, but it's that's what you need to go with this into. It's it's basically a, a crunch sound. So I'm in drop C, by the way. Uh, we're going to go back to normal pickup mode. I'm going to start on the uh, bridge and I'll play a little bit and mess around. <laughs>
as you can see, this is very uncompressed, kind of big, kind of fat. Uh, very, it's like a, a Marshall Lee sound with some sprinkle of Mesa flavor in there. Uh, to be honest with you, this is really cool for like a crunch sound. If you, you want, you want a crunch sound, but you want something a little different, this is perfect for it. EQ wise. It's one of the few ones that doesn't have the Mark V in it by default. I just pull out a little bit of mids uh, in there. I did not have to fight very hard to get this to sound good. Keep that in mind because as we go forward, you're going to see that change. Uh, as you heard it with the drive, uh, I got a little bit more kick in the butt. Let's see what it sounds like with GGD Cali. Like I said, best V30s ever made in some Mesa Cab. <laughs> As you can hear, a little bit different kind of flavor. Either one of them sound good, to be honest with you. All right, let's move right along, steaming along ahead. We are going to be at LD2 Green. So LD2 Green, this is uh, a medium Mark IV lead is what this is. I'm going to bullet point this in the video. If you're here because you're looking at how to dial in uh, the tri-axis because you're having problems with it, you can't figure it out, this is a secret. Boost 2200. I was fighting with, for this one particularly, I had to boost these two right here. And as you can see, this does not follow the typical Mesa V. And like 98% of all Mesas, you can come with the, the five mark, the five band mark, you do your V and you can, you know, it kind of sounds good. This is different. These amps have so much bass in the Axfix, it's, it's insane. Like I had to cut so much bass from it because I look, look at the tone. It's at like right here and there's just so much bass going on. It's absolutely insane. So the key to this boost 22 boost 6600 go kind of light your guitars may be a little bit different you set up maybe pickups maybe a little different you gotta do it to taste right until you feel like the uh, the sheet is kind of lifted off of the speakers and things kind of like lighten up that is where you have to kind of get it i had to cut the bass because it was just insanely boomy uh which it's it is going to be very different because the power section is different uh, let's see what uh, this sounds like and uh, I'm using it. What drive do I have? I'm bouncing between the precision drive and the, the Maxon. Uh, I find the precision is a little bit better in here because it kind of cleans up a little bit of the mess. The Maxon still has that like mid bump going on. So I kind of use it uh, sparingly. All right, let me play for you. <laughs> This tone is very interesting and it's very cool. As you can hear, I like running my things overdrive up and you adjust it with the gain. You got to keep the gain down because it's fine. It gets, out of, it gets out of control. The bass on here, like I said before, is, is insane. We're using that right there. EQ, showed you this before. Scoop some stuff out. Uh, th that's really all the things I messed with. Everything I'm showing you is the thing I messed with. I did go into ideal and I turned the fat and uh, I turned the fat switch on because Cliff always says the best way to get the tone out of the Mesa is to turn the fat switch on. Some of them in the triaxis it's already on by default, but we have we're double dipping in here. Uh, you can well, I'll just show you the difference. <laughs> Thank you. 
a slight difference in there. Not a whole lot going on. I do like this channel, and what I really like about this is you get that Mark IV flavor, but it's not overwhelming. I find that flavor can get kind of overwhelming sometimes. So this, moving on, this is the pre-LD2 Red. Uh, it's just kind of marked Red Shred. I think this is just kind of like gain upon gain upon gain upon gain upon gain. Uh, EQ is kind of similar, got a lot more bass. Uh, we're using the clone for this, the clone, clone, however you want to pronounce it. We're using that for this. Um, I find this one is a lot better for leads, to be honest with you. <laughs> You can hear and see this one's just kind of like in your face kind of like blah you play around with drives when you're doing this because i find different ones have different effects uh the preamp uh presence and the post amp presence screw mess with that a little bit i did that uh, you can get things brighter i lowered the treble down a little bit from my initial patch because i thought things sounded uh, a bit bright and a bit harsh moving right along to the very last and the line of Tri-Axis Amps is Cliff's favorite, the LD2 Yellow. And this one is, it's based off of the Mark II Plus. But as we kind of read earlier in the X Amp Guy, Cliff says that they say it's like the Mark II, but uh, it's a little bit different. So pretty much the whole synopsis of, of the Tri-Axis is you get Mesa flavor, you compare it with your own preamp. Uh, you get things sprinkled in, but they're all unique on their own. I find this is probably one of Mesa's best amps they ever made, to be honest with you, because it just it's so radically different. I don't say radically different, but it's it's what makes Mesa Mesa. But then they kind of ventured off into areas that uh, not a lot of Mesa, uh, not a lot of Mesa people think about uh, when they think about Mesa sound. If that makes any sense? Okay, enough of me rambling. Uh, let's play along. Uh, most importantly, output EQ, as you can see, it's kind of very similar to the other ones. Uh, 22 and 6600 are up, and I uh, had to custom load bass drive. We're using the uh, Maxon for this. <laughs> The 2C plus sound is definitely there. I'm sorry if this sounds thin, but I was having so much problem with the bass. Uh, I cut a bunch of it out. I was uh, messing with it and I didn't want it to be too over booming. So if it sounds thin, it's because I cut the bass back. So when you're dialing this in, just be very careful. Uh, using the Max on for this, I just find it sounded better. I do like this flavor. Considering we just did the 2C plus last video, 2C plus and a 2C plus plus, this one is very original. It's very different. Uh, that, Like I said, that flavor is there, but the stuff that I kind of really don't like about Mesa amps all that much is out of it. So I find that it's uh, really cool. Uh, let me just jack the gain up for you a little bit and I'll get you uh, right on out of here. <laughs> 
Guys, that is gonna wrap things up for the Mesa Triaxis. I think this one is very cool. If you're a fan of Mesa amps, you need to check this one out because you're gonna discover some new sounds that you really didn't think were there for a Mesa. I wanna apologize if my guitar kept going out of tune. It's very hot in my office studio, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, as you can see, the fan has been in the shot the entire time. I forgot to move it. Uh, I run a fan in here, it's September. But it's still kind of hot sometimes. Uh, if you thought this video was cool, leave me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for spending some time with me watching this video. I really do appreciate it. There's a lot of things vying for your attention out there and you chose to spend some time with me. I appreciate it. Again, if you're not subbed, you really should. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.